What is up, guys? This is your boy, Phil Shocker, the 96 Hedgehog here with our Week 5 Team Builder. Let me go ahead and actually... No, Week 6 Team Builder, my bad. Let me make sure I label this so I know what I'm talking about. Week 6 Team Builder of the APA Low Tier League. We are currently 2-3. and three. We still have a playoffs chance. If we lose our next two games, our playoff chances are basically over, I think. So, we are going to try our best to win. We're just going to do the best we can. We've had some actually really good games. Some that were misplaced on my end. Some were just due to hacks. So, it is going to be what it is. Or RNG in that case. But, we're going to try to do our best. But we're going against the VCU Go Goats. I actually didn't pay attention to the coach name once, which I'm very apologizing for. I'm really sorry for. Also, mini update. Uh, those team builders that went off earlier today... I'm not going to bother to record, record, actually, I might record them and put them all in one video because the audio didn't save on those videos, so I might just put all three videos and just let them play out and then just do that, so we'll probably just do that, but uh, we're going to focus on AP, so we are going to discuss, like I said, the VSCU Go-Goats. And here's their team. Their team consists of Seismitoad, Bronzong, uh, Mega Bennett, Crobat, Scrafty, Zangus, Colossal, Togetic, Galvantula, Blossom, and Murkrow. If my buddy Zach was here, he'd get that Murder Crow emo ready because he wants to take care of that Murder Crow for me. But good news is, Zach, Murder Crow probably ain't going to come to this match because it matches really badly. Uh, the six you see there, I think, are his best six. I can maybe see Colossal coming in if he really wants to. Togetic could be a stretch, but I think with having Crobat, I don't think he needs as many electric weaknesses as he would have, even though he would have Seismitoad and stuff like that. Galvantula, an honest opinion, I don't think really matches up well versus me. I don't think it does anything really. It doesn't do too much versus me. I just generally don't think it's that good in this matchup. Um, Seismitoad, I think, comes since I don't, my grass type really gets pressured, so I think he'll be bringing it. Bronzong comes as a Levitate user. Bayonet's just gonna be annoying. Crobat comes because, obviously, he just destroys everything on my team. Scrafty comes as a way to stop my core slot, and I think Zangoose is the sixth slot for the fact that, that Toxic Boost, plus the fact that Normal Spam is super spammable for some of my team. I have two resists. And plus the coverage that Zangos gets is very scary. So let's break down the team we're bringing for this week and we'll go over that. We're bringing first off good old Wormy, dude. Wormy's been able to come to pretty much every single game because it just matches up so good. I love Electros, dude. Electros has been one of my low-key favorite Electro types using so far. And uh, this set's pretty cool. We're bringing sub three attacks. Uh, these three attacks really just check so much of his team. Obviously, he's got Assault Vest users. It's going to be good to we'll find them out. But it's going to be a little troubling for us because I would have loved to run a power-up set. But the problem would have been that if I get taunted by Bayonet, Bayonet kind of cripples me. So this set is kind of made to stop Bayonet from beating me. Basically, actually, let me check something real quick. Does Bayonet get Recover? Please, for the love of God, do not get Okay, does not get recovered, but does get rest, so. I'm pretty sure he gets pain split, but I don't know if we'll see pain split. But, this Pokemon really can just do so much versus his team. Once we set up behind a substitute, we're going to have to start breaking things on his team. Uh, Thunderbolt, Giga Drain, Flamethrower, just checks so much of his team. It doesn't hit, a lot of stuff will probably be either nuked or super close to being nuked. Um, the Flamethrower is there specifically for the Bronzong, since I know Bronzong is actually not going to be uh, heatproof. More likely it will be Levitate, because more of a threat. Uh, if you really look at my team, Pyroar doesn't match up at all in this match. It kind of does, but it doesn't match up that strong versus me. So, in that regard, alright, ready. Max HP, 76 in the defense. 108 Modest Nature, and 72 in Spadef for some bulk. Mixed defensive, but more off bit offensive, so in that sense of regard. Also, ignore the sounds here in the background. It's just my cat, Ouija, playing with the bed with his nails. Up next, bringing back... We have not used this man in a hot minute since, I think, week one. We have not used this Pokemon, I think. Or week two. I don't remember exactly what was the last time we used it. But we're bringing back Guzma, and Guzma 
has a phenomenal matchup. He has very little switches to Aqua Jet. Source has Aqua Jet, holds Leech Life, and Liquidation is just so spammable versus him. Once I get a sword stands up, Aqua Jet pretty much just cleans house. Liquidation pretty much destroys. This Pokemon is so good versus him in this matchup. He's going to struggle versus it. If we get a Swords Dance up, I'm pretty sure Crobat's just going to drop. Because I'm running Max HP for my bulk and Max Attack Adamant for defense. No bother putting any Spadef Bulk in. He doesn't really any special attackers this week. So it's going to be more reliable on the good offensive prowess. This team's a little more Fizdev Bulky than Spadef Bulky. Which is a little concerning. But I definitely think Ghostless Spot can be able to break through those teams if we really want to. And I know this is going to look really weird, but listen up on me. We're bringing uh, good old Jesse, our Arbok, this week with the Black Sludge Intimidate. Uh, Intimidate's not terrible to bring in this matchup. I could run Shed Skin. Well, actually, what's my other abilities? Or on Nerve. I could run that, but I kind of like Intimidate. Intimidate's really good because then it doesn't, like, even though, yes, it's an annoyance, but it really helps stop uh, offensive this, offensive that if it's physical, that, that, that if it's really physical, that if it's physical, that it's physical. So I feel like Intimidate is going to be the better choice. If it ends up not being it, we're going to end up being a bad. We're bringing Coil Set, Coil Crunch, Sleep Bomb, and Poison Jab. This checks so much of his team. Poison Jab Stab is pretty decently good. Uh, his check to this thing's probably going to be a mix of probably Seismitoad and Bronzong. Once I figure out exactly what his main check is to this Pokemon, it's going to be dependent. Because I click Coil every single time, and then I either click Clunch, Seed Bomb, or whatever is in front of me. If he scouts, <gasps> excuse me, if he scouts, that's going to be a bit of a problematic thing. But I think we can do a lot with this team. I'm next to bring Master Roshi with the Lumberry. Now, you might be asking yourself, why the heck would I bring this Lumberry? Well, Lumberry is very interesting in the fact that Bulk Up Knockoff is what I have to do to beat that dang Bayonet. If we don't see Bayonet, then this guy is really a terrible player. And he really is. Because I expect pretty much a Will O Wisp from that Bayonet. And I don't want to get burned. Also, if I can get, you know, avoid being toxic and stuff like that, that'd be really cool too. Um, but bulk up, knock off, drain punch. Stone Edge is there for his flying types. That's pretty much it. Other than that, he has no safe switches to knock off plus drain punch. And that's really just a running max HP, 104 in attack with an Adam in nature, 116 in defense, 36 in spadef. Again, like I said, his team's more physically offensive, so I put a little more of a fizz def bulk set on this one. I really hope I don't regret not bringing the a different item i really hope i don't regret it up next is a oldie but goodie is no bird i'm a beautiful fly on and we're bringing adamant banded fly on baby running u-turn earthquake outrage and throat chop throat chop's only really there for his ghost types and for uh bronze on because they know we're gonna be he's gonna be levitate Outrage is so spammable when uh, when the Bronzong is gone. Earthquake is so great when Bronzong is gone. U-turn's great for pivoting. This Pokemon's just going to hit like a mad truck. We are faster than the uh, Scrafty of its max speed. We are we got some bulk in at 104. And then max attack adamant. My god. By the way, this is also made to work. We already outspeed Scrafty as it was. Or no. Wait. Oh, I guess I didn't care about my speed here in this one. I guess what it was all that. But the next Pokemon you see here, you're really much questioning. And it's Royalty the Superior. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, wait a minute. Why are you bring Superior this game? It makes no sense. Well, little Timmy, let me tell you why. We're bringing, Rory, we're bringing R Superior. And again, I want to reiterate that Superior must be run primarily as an Overgrow user. I cannot use Contrary. If I use Contrary, it's an automatic DQ, or I let this Pokemon die off, and then I get screwed off later in the game. But we're running enough HP, we're running enough, run enough speed to outspeed Zangoose, max HP, 80 in attack with Adam and Nature, speed, coil, knockoff, Leaf Blade. Leaf Blade is super spammable versus Team Watch. Crobat is pretty much gone, and so is um, Bronzong. Knockoff is there for Bronzong, so I can 1v1 it. Coil is really good, and then the Worry C is the tech to cripple Bayonet. If we can cripple Bayonet to the point where Worry Seed beats it, we are going to be in the driver's seat, guys. But that's going to be the team builder, guys. Again, we nearly need to pick up this win in order to keep the playoff chances alive. But I've been Phil Shock and I'm Hedgehog. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.